Welcome back to the Street Cred Podcast, the show laser focused on helping you turn your streetwear side hustle into a full time job. I'm Elijah Delport. I wanted to speak on the topic of artist versus business person. I've been having a few conversations recently with some people that are very close to me, my friends and family, about AI and the effects of AI in our world today and particularly on the fashion industry as well when speaking about my work. And it's raised the question about whether you as a brand owner are an artist or a business person. And the reason that is is because those two different people will relate to something like AI in different ways. And although the topic of this conversation about artist versus business person isn't exactly about AI, I did want to bring it up as context for how this has come about um, in my mind, how I've been thinking about it. And, And so, look, I'll start with telling you a story that a couple of months ago, I tried to make a post to Reddit. In fact, I did. I made a post to Reddit and it was about how I believe Nike has used their marketing content strategy to grow an audience and retain an audience of super fans that eventually convert to customers. And it's by selling the idea behind the clothing instead of the clothing itself. And it's one that I truly believe in I, I, I truly I have a real conviction about that strategy that Nike and many other brands are using and its effect in how smaller brand owners can be using that and how many aren't. And when I made the post, oh my goodness, was I surprised to experience so much hate. I hadn't used Reddit in a long time, and so my karma, if anyone's used Reddit before, you have karma. It's like a point system equivalent to likes on TikTok. You have a number of likes on your profile. And my karma was at zero before posting it. After posting it, I think I was at negative two karma. Negative two karma, which basically makes my profile um, invalid to any community or any subreddit that I might want to join. So that's... That's another topic. That's the downside to all this. But I realized that the the audience that I made that post to on the subreddit was an audience of artists. They would call themselves designers. They were product-focused people. And when I say product-focused in, in, in terms of streetwear fashion, they were all about designing what they considered to be something that was just incredible something that was the epitome of what art is to them something that was going to make people go wow and talk just by the product itself something that that was different and it's not to say that business people aren't doing that it's just about order of priorities and so of course they didn't like my angle about nike using the strategies or content their 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 content strategy to to grow an audience of super fans by selling the idea behind the garment instead of the garment itself because they believe in the art of streetwear they think that people grow streetwear brands because of the the garment and the garment alone and so I think that is really what an artist is. If, if I look out in, in the current market at the companies that are, I would say, are driven by the art more than the business of fashion, I see Dior, I see Louis Vuitton, I see Rick Owens. These are, well, many times, these are names of the designers themselves. Like that's one sure way to tell if a brand is more art-focused or or business focused is if the name of the designer is the brand name and a lot of times these are high fashion brands and so that that is the artist brand the one that's focused on the design and then on the other hand you have the business the business people and this is another side of fashion and I don't, it's not that I believe that the business people don't care about the product and making good designs because I absolutely think they do and any good business person would. However, the objective is different 
the objective is not to create art, but rather to... Maybe it's in part to be profitable. I, I do think it goes deeper than that. Um, but I believe it's, it goes beyond the garment. I mean, it's a lot more about the brand. And so if we think of the priority, if, if you think there's two elements of any streetwear brand, there's streetwear and brand. Streetwear being the product and the brand being everything else, as in the story behind the product and the messaging and the identity and the lifestyle that's being sold. So you've got streetwear, the product, and brand, everything else. You've got the artist that's concerned about the product, primarily. And then you have the business person that's concerned about the brand, primarily. Both of them do care about the other parts. However, the order of, of priority is different. I mean, I, I can pull examples from my own life. I come from a videography background, and that originated that love for videography originated in my in my early years creating short films with my friends and so all throughout my early teen years many of my friends and family would ask me so are you going to grow up to be a director and although I loved filmmaking I always thought that Man, that would just be a a real a real challenge growing up to be a director because that's that's the artist route, you know. Pe- people that that consider themselves filmmakers, that consider themselves a, a director, that is an artist route, and you'd really there's only one way to make money in my head at that time anyway, and it was that you need to be famous. That's how you make money being a director. You need to be famous. There's no in-between. There's only you're famous or you're not, and you're struggling. So I was like, man, I'm not going to do that. Um, And so I took the other route for a long time, and that was the business route. And so I used my filmmaking and videography skills to, instead of making feature films or short films or creating art, I decided to, to create ads. And so I went into the commercial industry, and creating videos for businesses. And so they're the two different routes. For me, as a videographer, it was either to go and become a filmmaker to make films or to create videos, ads for businesses. So I, I chose the latter part. And it's and it's the thing is, it's not that when I'm a commercial videographer, I don't care about the story and I don't care about the um, the characters and I'm not making short films. In fact, that's that's not even remotely true because all those things are very, vitally important for a commercial filmmaker. However, it's my relation to the story and the characters is very different to if I was a filmmaker, director, if I was a writer, if I was creating narrative films. And so it's much the same in the fashion industry with this distinction, artist and business person. You have the designer and the the business person. And so and so I think that's a, it's a very important distinction to make. Um, and and honestly, I, I look in the fashion industry and I think the artist route looks like a really difficult one because every industry doesn't matter which one yearns for difference it yearns for a point of difference it doesn't matter what you're doing whether you're whether you're in a creative videography industry or whether you're in construction or whether you're in fashion it doesn't matter it, it yearns for a point of difference and it rewards those that give the industry that difference something that's meaningfully different from every other offering in the market and so the way that that artists versus business people in the fashion industry craft their point of difference looks different. I know a bit of a mouthful with all the, the, the difference, right, in, in my sentences. But w- what I'm trying to suggest, l- let me give an example. An artist, a fashion artist or a designer, their point of difference is in the product itself. So they have to, this is why I think Balenciaga, for example, or, or any of those brands that are, that are on the runways on Paris Fashion Week, they are taking the idea of, of wearing a garment to a very far extreme. Why is that? 
Well, it's because they're looking for their point of difference. I saw the uh, this week, just this week gone, um, a bag that was made out of a hoodie. I think Balenciaga released it. I even saw some press that they copied it from a smaller brand. It's an interesting idea. It's very out there. It's, it's extreme. And it's because they, they are the artists. They are designers. And they're looking for points of difference in the garment itself. This is, this is a hard route. Because the question that comes to mind when I'm thinking of being an artist, being a designer, and finding my point of difference in the garment itself is how how many differences can you actually find in the way you wear or style a garment? How different can that really be? It's not to say that it's impossible. It's just to say that it, that, that is difficult as hell to to create something. And so there's many brands and designers out there that then I see wanting to be a designer, which means that they're going to be drawing their point of difference from the garment itself. Yet their garment looks like everyone else's. And so I, I wonder why they're, they're trying to be a designer at all, because that looks like a strategy that's bound to, to fail. Honestly, that that's how it appears to me. And I, I think there's enough, I mean, this is evidence, this is an, more anecdotal than anything. But I, I see these these designers that, that try and create something, yet it looks, it doesn't really have any meaningful difference in aesthetic nor in function. And so, well, that's, that, that's not offering anything to the market that, that it would prefer buying to everything else that's on offer. So to summarize, the artist draws at their point of difference from the garment, whereas the, the business person in the fashion industry draw, draws their point of difference from the branding. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take Nike. Nike is definitely a business, right? Yes, there's designers. Again, it's not that they don't care about the design. It's just that they're definitely a business before they're artists. They're business people before they're artists. And they have drawn their point of difference from the brand by hyper-focusing. They've, they've found their niche. And their niche is, is athletes, people who believe they are athletes. And so all of their marketing reflects that idea. It's less about the picture in this case. If we think, okay, if we think... Um, about the analogy of the picture in a frame. The picture being the, your clothing product and the frame being the marketing, how you frame the product. They've, they're, they're basically, they're doing the same picture, right? Their picture is not really meaningfully different from any other brand. Like it, you know, more or less, you could say that Nike's clothing looks the same as Adidas, the same as Puma, the same as, I mean, look, I might get some, some, some hate for this because, you could tell me all the reasons why they're not, why they're better, why they're worse. Really, that's not why people are buying. Their meaningful difference is in the frame. It's in the marketing. It's it's the fact that they are appealing to people who are be who believe they are athletes, and that they show that through creating athlete stories in their in, in videos they post to Instagram, posting inspirational content, mini documentaries. Right again, it's going beyond the product, and that's why I say they're business people, and so. If we look, if we step back and say, well, if you want any sort of a successful fashion business or fashion label, you need a point of difference. And then we say, well, if you're an artist, your point of difference is drawn from the product. If you're a business person, your point of difference is drawn from the brand. I would go as far as to say that it's much easier drawing a point of difference from the brand than it is from the product. Honestly, because I, I see the product innovations as always trying to find something new, searching and searching and searching. It feels so much more feeble, like a, a company that stood on quicksand. Like, it, like you know, we, ha we see those brands and people talk about them. Man, they just don't miss. They hit every time. Yeah, but what about the time they fail? If, if their company is stood on top of the idea that they're artists and that they're making a a product that is their point of difference is drawn from the product itself. Well, what happens when they create something that doesn't hit anymore? 
and then we have the the Nikes, the I can't think of any other brand right now. I don't know why. I should know some others. But then we have the Nikes and they they draw their point of difference in the lifestyle they are selling. That sounds, especially for a new person to the fashion industry, a lot easier than creating a product that's totally different that, that no one's ever seen before. Honestly. Because then you can go, okay, what are my interests? Or what's a a grounding belief or value of someone that I know? Or what's an ideology? How can I sell that? How can I put that on a t-shirt? I mean, that's what, that's what I think Pyra's done. Yes, Pyra creates fantastic garments. They're not really selling the garments. They're, it, there's business people behind that brand. They're selling the brand before they sell the garments. They're, this idea of moving, inspiring movement in the elements. And, and so... I just think, especially if you're just starting out, it's it to me it appears to be a much more simple or easier route to take is to decide, well, especially if you don't, if you're just designing because you like fashion versus you actually want to be a designer or an artist, take the business owner out. You don't need to be the artist. You don't need to be the designer. And so, anyway, this is my little spiel on um, artists versus business people in the world of fashion. I think there is really a big a, a distinction between the two, and I'm working out more and more in this business that I'm undergoing as a as a content strategist that the people that really enjoy the ideas that I'm sharing with the fashion industry are those that consider themselves as business people before they are artists. And the people that really don't like it are the artists because they, because a lot of what I'm sharing is about, well, think about what you can do beyond the garment. So look, my ideas in, in sharing the lifestyle behind your brand, marketing something that goes beyond the garment, marketing your story, your brand message, and how that can be financially beneficial in so many ways isn't for everyone. That isn't for everyone. And I recognize it because there's going to be business people that love it. And then there's going to be the artists that don't. And so I say, so to you, if you are an artist, there is a space in the fashion industry for you in creating a garment that is innovative in aesthetic or function. And we've seen it because there are, there are companies that are successfully doing this and designers that are successfully doing this. There is a place for that. And I believe it's a harder route. And this channel that I'm through which I'm sharing my ideas is more of a place for the business people because I'm, I consider myself a business person before I'm an artist and so, of course, I'm going to appeal to people that believe the same about themselves. So, look, I this is just what's been on my mind this week about business people versus artists. I hope you've found it productive to you in in some sort of way. Maybe being confident in the route that you're taking as a fashion entrepreneur in this space whether you consider yourself to be the artist, that you just you hold the garment in the highest esteem, that everything about the design is of the utmost importance and that you are, you are truly believe you're creating art versus the business person, that you want to put your beautiful garments in a nice frame and the frame is what you are spending time on and forming and creating. You're building a customer base around what you're doing and an audience and a community and and so yes i i all i want desire this to be is an encouragement to whoever you are and if you are the artist be the artist if you're the business person be the business person but don't confuse it and don't don't try to be both and so so yeah that's that's really my my conclusion on it um but you know what? I'm, I'm going to put this out there before I sign off this podcast. And it's that 
I would really love to hear your thoughts on the topic of artist versus business person. Who are you? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you disagree? And why has something I've said sparked a thought or given you confidence to more holistically or fully chase where you want to be and what you want to be doing? Let me know by leaving a comment or by sending me an email at uh, at Lige at ElijahDelport.com. That's L-I-J at ElijahDelport.com. And please send me an email and share. My inbox is always open because I'm really curious to know. I'm not trying to make enemies. Really, I'm just trying to share some ideas that aren't meh, that aren't fence-sitting, that, that are maybe a little bit controversial in nature at times, but make people think in a different way. And so I, if this has challenged you, I, I'm really glad it has. And, and so... And so thank you for very much for listening to the Street Cred Podcast. And one last thing, I have started a community for streetwear entrepreneurs. It's called Streetwear 365. And wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast, there will be a link in the description where you can access that for free, 100% for free. It's a space where the, you, you can bounce ideas, stay accountable, stay motivated and make friends with other brand owners and streetwear entrepreneurs. It's amazing what I've seen so far in this space, having just really started building this community quite recently. It has been my favorite project that I've ever worked on in business because the connectivity and th- that comes from a space like this is so different. It's not possible internally in your company to ever have anything like this. And and so that's why I think it's such a beautiful space to have where all the members from so many different brands, from so many different parts of the journey, whether they're just starting or they've been in the game for 10 years, to come together in one place and share their knowledge and give advice and answer questions and ask questions And so whatever part of the journey that you are in streetwear, I encourage you, please join. You can go to school.com slash streetwear365. That's school with a K. Again, the link for that will be in the description of wherever you're watching or listening to this too. And it is 100% free. So please join and I will see you on the other side. Other than that, I'll see you next week for another podcast. Thanks for listening.